Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share a little bit about a project I did recently where I was comparing a human design or something I designed with an outcome from generative design or AI design. I have a 3D printer and my favorite part about the 3D printer is that I get to model up things and then I get to print them out and I get to use the real world object that I designed in either Fusion or Inventor. And one of the things I thought of that I could design is a little phone stand. You can see this phone stand is very similar to something you could buy on Amazon or Walmart or whatever. It's just nothing very special about it. I kind of just designed it up. Uh, one of the, the intentions I had here was to be able to put the phone in here vertically and be able to plug um, the charging cord in this little gap here. And I have a couple portable power supplies and I thought it'd be nice to be able to store those on the bottom face here. So this design's okay, but after I printed it out, I was like, hmm, I wonder what generative design would come up with. So I came up with the idea of copying this file and running a generative design study and kind of comparing what that comes up with what I have. So to do the generative design study, I didn't want to completely trash the file that I had, so I made a copy of it. And just to kind of give you an idea of what I saw here is the idea that, you know, I already have preserved geometry that I've already modeled up. And really, it's just this, you know, leg back here that I could let generative design design for me. So I made a copy of this file. And you can see that I've basically trimmed off that section there. For this to also work, I needed some obstacles. And like I've said, I wanted to put a portable power supply on this lower leg. So I designed up another body and you can see here it's oversized. Obviously it's not that big, but I wanted to give myself uh, enough width that if I had a different model or maybe it is that wide that I would have enough width that direction. And here I wanted to make sure that I would be able to access this section. One of the first iterations I ran, the software saw that connecting the base here and here was actually the shortest distance. And I was like, oh, that might work, but I was kind of having the vision of it coming back this way. So I decided to just lengthen this obstacle here to mimic the fact that I'm sliding it in there. So once I had that, I went into my generative design uh, workspace. I was able to preserve or identify as preserves the two bodies that I had and also that one obstacle. So in retrospect here, just since I'm talking about what I did versus uh, maybe ways I can improve it, I did realize that I probably should have had an obstacle for where the charging cord is going to connect and also where the phone's going to sit because I don't want it to accidentally start growing material through here. One of the things that happened to me is it actually added material in this little gap, which I didn't want to have and it was easy to remove, but it was something that I realized that I should have provided for in the study the first time through. And these are the things you learn as you kind of run through these. So for my load cases, under my loads, I basically had gravity pulling on the phone and I also added a force of five pounds, which you're like, Steve, do you, is your phone really five pounds? I looked up the spec of my phone, and it really is only about a half a pound, and I actually set it up like that. I've done enough of these studies to realize that uh, that a half a pound is probably not heavy enough of a weight for it to really calculate, so it actually failed the first two times I tried to run the study, so I was like, you know what, it might be because I only have a half a pound, it's not a lot of weight, I'll just kind of jack it up. And I, I pushed it to five, which is obviously going to over-engineer what I have, but I could also then dial it back in a little bit later once I have the design done. So I figured that was a good load uh, case constraint-wise. I just put a fixed constraint on the bottom. I was trying to figure out what would be the best thing to do. This seemed like the simplest solution. There might be some better options, but I was like, ah, eh, that's probably going to work out well. So uh, in terms of the manufacturing method, uh, I knew when I modeled up mine that I basically laid it on its side here, if I turn off the obstacle, and I basically laid it on its side and had the printer build it up that direction. That seemed like the simplest option. So I just used that same idea when I did the generative design study. 
after having done this, I was like, oh man, that'd be kind of cool just to say, you know, it set all the print orientations and, and maybe even the unrestricted option and let generative design have some fun and come up with multiple different options. I kind of just had a, a, an idea in mind and also kind of like a one to one, you know, this is what my idea was kind of constrained generative design a little bit to kind of think a little bit more like me and see what it comes up with. The other thing that I had to do here, if I jump back to my design, is PLA, which is the material that is uh, what I typically 3D print with, is not in the material library. So I actually had to um, go into the material library, find something similar, and then I had to copy it. So if I edit here, go to the advanced tab, I basically had to go to this physical tab, try to see if I could find as many of these properties as I could. Uh, I found a couple different articles. I think I got some pretty decent properties here, but PLA is not part of the library, so I had to find that material and add it to the library. But if I jump back into my generative design study, under materials, you'll see that I have under my additive, I have PLA, and actually it shows up as under all methods as well. So once I had that, I was able to hit uh, the solve and let it solve and come back with some results, so we'll take a look at that. So I'm going to go to the Explore here, and you see I only got one result because I, I kind of pigeonholed generative design in. I basically only gave it one manufacturing method and one material, and in that case it's only going to give me one outcome. So if I click on this, you'll see that it actually kind of came up with a pretty neat idea. I'm very much into symmetry, and I did not enable it on this, but you can see here if it's laying on the print bed, like this it actually was somewhat smart and it built material here i had to generate supports underneath this when i 3d printed it but as it grew up it was able to make essentially like a trough or a cav uh, a cavity here that was still strong it required less supports because of its shape and uh, it worked out nicely and, it, and if again if i would do this again kind of looking back what would i do better next time Again, I'm pretty much into symmetry, so I would have probably applied the symmetry option so I had a symmetrical shape. But in my case here, what I did next was I hit the little uh, design from outcome where it created a file. We'll take a look at that now. Okay, so here is my current version of that. You can see actually I'm actually on version 8, and I've actually done some edits here, playing around with a little bit about how the phone sits here. I realized that maybe if I had a thicker phone case, I wouldn't have, uh, it wouldn't fit down into the little opening. So I've kind of played around with a few different options. Uh, if I roll back to right about here, um, I still have some edits. I made some edits to the freeform body that was in that design initially. So if I actually come back uh, over to my, my data panel, I can actually show you here what this thing looked like originally. I'm actually going to open up what was version one. So a couple things to kind of note here is you'll see that this is the material that I was talking about that I ended up having to modify. Uh, basically what you can do is you can go into this organic shape or uh, there's actually this boundary fill feature. If I say edit feature, I'll, I'll see if they'll let me do that. Uh, I basically was able to uncheck this box uh, in the boundary fill feature, it kind of sees different boundaries or different entities and lets you include or exclude those. So basically one edit I did was just uncheck that box and, and moved on. The other thing that I did is if I go into the form here, I didn't quite like how this body kind of uh, kind of went past the edge there. Initially I was like, oh, it's going to make it harder for the supports or more supports. Probably not really, uh, but all I really did here is there's some frozen edges. I was able to select those, make sure that I thawed those or unfroze those edges. There we go, unfreeze. Then I grabbed roughly the same bodies and just used, say, an edit form to slide those in or even rotate them. I think I did a little bit of rotation, a little bit of sliding. Say OK, finish form there. And uh, like I said, just to kind of mimic the, the changes I made before, I went into this edit feature. Uncheck this box. 
And now you can see that's those are the edits that I made. I, I made a few more, again, to try to maybe add some fillets because I realized those sharp corners weren't the best idea. But I made a few changes like that. Okay, so I have two models here, one that I designed and one that was generative designed or designed with generative design. You can see the generative design one is actually a little bit more intriguing. It kind of looks cool. It's got a really weird organic shape holding up the phone compared to my very traditional, very mechanical, very blocky type design. Which one is actually going to perform better was somewhat an important question. So I decided to run an FEA analysis, analysis on both of these. One of the things that was critical to me, or I felt was somewhat important, was the displacement here. How much was this going to bend when I put a phone on here? Because I wanted to put a charging cord through here, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to bend down so much that my charging cord wouldn't fit there whenever it actually displaced down, because this is just plastic. So uh, what I decided to do is I did create an FEA study for that. So if I go to the simulation environment, and basically the same type of constraints that we had before. So constraint wise fixed on that bottom face loads uh, didn't have gravity turned on in this one. We can actually en enable that and run it again just to make sure we don't get some bad results. So why don't we do that? Let's um, turn that on and I'll change the angle of it. So it is pushing down like we expect. So we have that, uh, that's going to have to cause me to, to rerun my results. But my force here, if I just edit that super quick, you'll see that it is pushing down. Uh, because I am not in the generative design environment, I can actually make this a little bit more applicable. I decided to make it one pound, just it's a little bit heavier, maybe got a heavy phone case on whatever, just figured that would be a good number to work with. So uh, on my, my generative design one, if we just look at that really quick, if we go to the simulation environment, one thing that's cool about generative design is it will copy over all these loads and cases, etc. whenever you um, out, out, create the output or the outcome. It will actually copy all the load cases, all those things set up in here so I can validate my results after I've maybe made some changes just by coming in here and saying, yes, bring those the study data over. And, re and give me new results. So let's take, uh, let, let me come back over here. I'm going to tell it to solve again because I did add gravity. I'll solve it locally. So that's going to take a couple minutes. I'll pause my video so you don't have to sit here and watch this churn. All right, so my results have been calculated. Just quickly, let's take a look at safety factor. So my minimum factor of safety on this one is 4.985. If I look at the one that generative design created we go to the results there look at safety factor we're at 4.74 so they're pretty close uh, it depends upon what your target is here is to which one's better typically in in simulations we're looking for a safety factor somewhere between two and three uh, and we're trying to not over engineer or over design the part so in this case to generative design one did a little bit better than mine because it came in a little bit closer to the two to three range. Um, not by much, just by a hair, but still um, still slightly better than what I had. Like I said, the other critical factor to me was the displacement. So if you look at displacement, you can see here I'm at 0.1313. If I come over here and look at displacement, we're at 0 0.01845. And, and this is both in inches, just to make sure we're not talking about different units. So the generative design one definitely outperformed me in terms of displacement because it's not going to flex as much there. I'm getting basically over an eighth of an inch, which isn't a ton, but it is significantly more than this, which is about, uh, if I remember my, my, my fractional equivalents, my decimal fractional equivalence, this is about a 64th. So we're getting about a fourth uh, less or 25% of the deflection compared to the two. If we, if we also wanted to say look at the, at the mass, if I go back to my design, I can go to my properties here. And my physical properties on this one, my mass is 2.873 ounces. 
If I come back over to here, jump out, go to my design, go to my properties. And we're 2.17. So we're actually a little bit lighter on the generative design one as well. So again, typically lighter is what we're shooting for. So in this case, generative design has the edge as well. So it has um, a better safety factor compar uh, in terms of trying to not over engineer. It has lighter mass and less deflection. The other factor here might be how long does it take to print? And that's not gonna show up here, but having printed both of these designs, I can say that my design took about 10 and a half hours to print and the generative design model took about eight and a half hours to print. So it's a little bit quicker. I can make them more quickly, which that might also be a critical factor to you as well. Which one's better? You might have a different opinion than I do, but just right now it looks like generative design is the better option because it did have some of those critical factors. It had better numbers. So just in conclusion here, I just wanna kind of point out that you know, generative design, AI design, really it's not me versus the computer. It's usually me plus the computer. Realistically, the I had to f give it some direction. I had to give it uh, some input so it understood what to design. I think it came up with something pretty cool. At least it's more aesthetically pleasing. It is outperforming or would outperform my design based off the FEA analysis that we've done. So I think uh, based off of this model, I'd say that Fusion and I make a pretty good team, and um, it's, again, really there to augment my abilities, not replace my abilities. So if you haven't tried it out yet, this is a, a pretty simple thing you can try. Maybe you have a design that you've been working on. You're like, hey, let's just give it a shot. You've, if you already have it done, it's pretty simple to kind of just trim away, get remove some things, set up your study, and just see what generative design comes up with. Uh, it usually comes up with some really neat, interesting shapes. Even though the shapes are pretty interesting, you might be thinking, well, Steve, yeah, you can pretty much 3D print anything. I'm more of a, a CNC mill. You know, these shapes look like there's something I can't create or I can't program on a CNC mill. One of my last videos was on that process, too. We actually went through a process of taking apart, generative designing it, telling it to, to make it for 3D access milling, and then programming that out. So if you're more of a mill you know 3 3d uh, or sorry three axis milling there are ways to do that as well i just have to tell it the outcome should be made that way i chose 3d printing because that's how i intended on making this component well that is all i have for now if you have any questions or comments feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen i love to hear what you thought was the better part was it better was the part that i designed better or was what generative design created better if you've tried this out on your own, I'd love to hear what you have to say about uh, what you've come up with, what you've seen. So feel free to enter those as the comments or email me with those comments as well. And as always, thanks for watching.